They're coming to get you, Barbara. Well, guys, it's October, which means it's time for everyone to get their creep on and start watching horror films. <laughs> horror is one of my favorite film genres. And no, I'm not talking about the lazy ones that are riddled with cheap jump scares. I'm looking at you, the nun. No, I'm talking about the grade A stuff, the ones that are actually scary. Those that crawl under your skin and haunt your dreams at night. There are several good examples of these types of films in recent years, but let's face it. If you want the absolute best, the creme de la creme of horror, then you've got to look back to the classics. With that being said, let's talk about The Innocents, and why it's the perfect film to enjoy your fright during the Halloween season. Before I begin, please leave a like and a comment, subscribe to my channel, ring the bell, and share this video. I really appreciate it. The film tells the story of... Uh, wait, wait a minute, wait just a second, wait a second. Ah, that's more like it. Okay, the film tells the story of Miss Giddens, a kind and caring woman who really, really loves children. More than anything, I love children. More than anything. She becomes the new governess to a pair of young orphan twins, a brother and a sister, who live in their uncle's ridiculously large and creepy old mansion, along with the housekeeper, Mrs. Gross, and a few other servants. At first, everything seems normal, with nothing to suggest otherwise. But, as with any other delicious horror, it turns out things are not as they appear to be. We find out that the previous governess, Miss Jessel, died under mysterious circumstances. And the children, Flora and Miles, after giving the impression of being just a pair of polite, eloquent, high-society kids, start to pile on the creep factor hard. And when Miss Giddens begins to see apparitions of people who are long gone from this world, that's when you've got yourself a tasty gothic ghost story, folks. <sighs> I can feel the jitters just talking about it. If I had to describe the film in just two words, it'll be delightfully creepy. Oh look, it's a lovely spider and it's eating a butterfly. Jesus. While other films use ugly methods like blood, gore, guts, or the aforementioned cheap jump scares to startle, shock, or to just plain gross you out, The Innocence uses clean cinematography, gorgeous set design, a gothic atmosphere, and some of the best uses of sound I've ever seen in a film to creep you the F out. Not that I have an issue with the ugly methods if they're used well. I mean, Sam Raimi built a career out of it. But you can't deny that it is an acquired taste, all while The Innocence is a film that could be sincerely enjoyed by everyone. The film is anchored by Deborah Kerr's excellent, excellent performance as Miss Giddens. He was staring past me into the house as if he were hunting someone. Oh, what's he like, Miss? Oh, he had dark, curling hair and the hardest, the coldest eyes. You see... Would you say he was very handsome? Oh, yes, yes, handsome, handsome and obscene. But I've seen him before. Yes, he... I know where I've seen him. A picture. There's a picture of him. As of yet, this is the only film of hers that I've seen. I'm not familiar with the actress at all. But let me tell you something. In the film, she delivers what very well may be the greatest performance by a female lead in a horror film that I've ever seen. The only ones that I can think of that come close are Ellen Burstein in The Exorcist, Jodie Foster in Silence of the Lambs, maybe Essie Davies in The Babadook, but no. Deborah Kerr is the MVP of female-led horror. She has such a magnetic screen presence. Her delivery and facial expressions are all top-notch, and she really gets you invested in what she's going through in the film. Truly a 10 out of 10 performance. I have nothing negative to say about it. Do keep in mind, of course, that this is a 60-year-old film, and acting has changed a lot since then. But for me, her performance still holds up extremely well. The child actors also do a fantastic job. Of course, they're far more creepy than endearing, but it's a horror film, and no good horror film is complete without a creepy kid or two. The children seem harmless enough at first, but it doesn't take long before Miss Giddens begins to suspect that there's more to them than meets the eye. Flora is creepy enough on her own, but Miles is a thousand times worse. Kiss me goodnight, Miss Giddens. 
Between casually flirting with a woman four times his age and even showing a tendency towards violence at some points, Miles feels much more like an adult than a kid. It's almost as if he's possessed or something. Don't worry, there's a man in the house. Is there? Yes, me. I'll protect you. Now, if you ask me, the greatest strength this movie has, other than Deborah Kerr, is its sound. The film showcases what are genuinely some of the best uses of sound I've ever seen in any movie, not just horror. It's wonderfully used throughout the film to amplify the creeps without straight up startling you. Right off the bat, the first thing we get when the movie starts is everyone's favorite, creepy child singing. We lay my love and I beneath a weeping willow, but not Really puts you in the mood, doesn't it? There's a wonderfully eerie moment near the beginning when Miss Giddens thinks that she hears something in the wind. The way that it feels like it's part of the music, but then we realize that she's actually hearing something is just exquisite. The film has plenty of other great examples like this. It also knows exactly when to add the perfect sound effect or when to not have any sound at all. Anna? The people who are in charge of the sound here deserve an Oscar. This leads to the film's excellent score, which is very dramatic and atmospheric and adds a very welcome layer of tension to the scenes. There's also one song in particular which serves as a reoccurring motif. Flora keeps humming it throughout the film, and Miles plays the same song on the piano, of course, Miss Giddens notices this, and she wonders where the song came from, which adds another element of mystery to the plot. That element of mystery is what drives the story forward. Miss Giddens has several conversations with Mrs. Gross throughout the film that help her uncover the secrets of the past. It's all very intriguing and expertly delivered, which is why even though these conversations serve primarily as exposition dumps, you still find yourself engaged. Of course, the biggest mystery of the film has nothing to do with the mansion, the ghosts, or the kids, but with Miss Giddens herself. The entire movie is told from her point of view. She's in all of the scenes, and we never leave her side, which means that we get to fully experience what she goes through. However, there's a catch. Because we see it through her eyes, we get no alternative point of reference, which means that we can never really be sure that what we see is what's actually happening. The film cleverly sprinkles shadows of doubt, which makes us ask the question, are we seeing a pure and gentle woman trying to save two innocent children from terrifying specters? Or are we seeing a broken woman gradually losing her mind and putting the kids in harm's way as a result? That's the biggest horror there is. The horror of the unknown. Unless he's deceiving us, unless they're both deceiving us, the innocence. I want to end this review by just saying again how much I appreciate this movie for not having any jump scares in it. Although, there is one moment that could be considered a jump scare. And because it's Halloween season, I'm gonna show it to you right now. Have fun! You know what? I changed my mind. Watch the movie and experience it for yourself. Happy Halloween! Thank you so much for watching this review. I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and check out my other content right here. Thank you all again and have a good one.